Yeah, uh, there's I that too. Yeah, saw this from John Rothstein, college basketball writer. I want to ask you, uh, this is more than just the story of the Horizon League has banned the University of Illinois Chicago from all winter and sports championships, including the upcoming conference tournament in men's and women's basketball. They recently announced they were leaving to join the Missouri Valley. Not like right now, but when that time comes, which could be even after this upcoming season. Like Cincinnati and Brigham Young, Brigham Young's independent, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF, and others. There's been like dozens of teams that are moving back and forth. Um, Texas and Oklahoma decided they were going to leave for the SEC. They feel like it will be 2025. It might be before then. Did they get banned from winning championships? No. Uh, is this petty on the conference's part, or should teams now just not tell the truth and then be secretive and say, okay, we're oh, done? Is it petty? It's the definition of petty. Of course if it, it was is. a ban, yes. it would be Tom Petty. It is so <laughs> petty. It is ridiculously petty. It is childish. It is ridiculous. And okay, they're they're banning the students from doing this, yes. right? Okay, which one of those players? forged the way to the Missouri Valley Conference was the one who when said look I'm not going to play another minute of basketball until we're in the gosh darn Missouri Valley not a one of them none of them they had no decision in that so now you're punishing student athletes for something that administrators did that has nothing to do with the student athletes ask any you know, when we have, like when you ask people like, hey, what do you think about, you know, Oklahoma, you know, leaving the conference or Texas leaving the conference to put any more, you know, edge on that game. And the players are like, yeah, no, they're still in the conference now. It doesn't matter to us. It's a fan thing most it's of the time. It's a fan thing. Yeah. And sometimes media. And, and this true. is this is a fan type decision that the that the conference made. That's ridiculous. Right. I, I think it's I the, think it's shameful. The Flames are 8 and 13, Craig. They are 4 and 8 in the conference. The only way they make the NCAA tournament was to have one of those Cinderella runs by winning the Horizon League Conference Tournament, and that ended when they made this decision the Horizon League did. Well, so for, their March Madness is done. Well, for one, I mean, like, that's on them, too. Their record is, is not that great. So, I mean, that's that's ultimately on them not receiving an invitation. If you needed a, a, a hopeful tournament dream run, like, yeah, we've seen two teams do that before, but it uh, doesn't sound very likely in their case. So let's not act like they're really missing out on too much ultimately. But... Let's uh, also acknowledge the Horizon said that they didn't give their exit officially in time, and that's why they're punishing them. They're not just saying, like, oh, you're leaving? Well, guess what? They didn't do it that way. It's They're being petty to the level of, well, if you look at the rule book, you didn't give us this amount of time to process the information and let known that you're going to be leaving. And so that's why they're saying that they're punishing uh, them in this regard. Now, congratulations to the, all the adults. This is like the third time that sports have done this. You remember James Madison in football? Uh, there was another uh, basketball league. Who was it? Uh, who? Oh man, there's another team that got barred from postseason play uh, here recently uh, in a similar situation. Uh, it was James Madison in the Sun Belt, Stony Brook in the Colonial uh, as well is is being barred from postseason play because they're moving. But I just want to say congratulations once again to all the adults in college athletics that are punishing the student athletes. I think that's brilliant. Let's take it out on the student athletes. Let's not be mad at the school for moving a decision that was not made by the student athletes. Let's punish their basketball players and not allow them to play in games that they may never get to play in again. I think that's what's really cool about these decisions. Yeah, it's it's, it's ridiculous and you know, I, I don't, I don't see the benefit in, and again, like, so the only thing you had, that, that's what makes it even more petty to me is, so the only hope that they had to get in the tournament, you've now taken that away. So the only shot, the only thing they had to play for at all was the fact that they get in the conference tournament, they get hot and they go on a run and they can make it. Now they're just playing out for the next three weeks. Yep. And it, it's, but you're, and, and then I got to tell you another thing. I don't know, and there's some, some conferences where you don't all get in. You yeah. know, like, you know, there's part of that in the Big 12 at times. I don't know about whether that means they were out, but they were not, like, dead last. They're in that, like, two-thirds of the way down. So that... But why don't you just fine them? Like, why, why punish the players? Take like, the players it, yeah. didn't do anything. The players just signed up to go to a school and play basketball. They have nothing to do with legislation or with any big decisions that are made. We know that. They're just there. They, they are on scholarship, and they play, and they go to practice, and they go to class, and that's what they do, and they have no control or no power. And now the adults are freaking out because the players do have more control and power. But in this case, it's not – 
at you know Alabama or at Baylor or at uh, USC or something, so it's not going to get the same amount of attention. But yeah, ultimately it's the players that get punished for this, and they had absolutely nothing to do, and that's why you know the NCAA thing when they were taking go. so long to punish Baylor, it's like we weren't against them punishing Baylor if there was stuff under NCAA legislation that they their rules were broken. Hey, if you broke rules, you get punished for it. But the problem that a lot of people that were following the story had was the simple fact that it was like set it was not set, but it was like uh, like three, four, five whole recruiting classes had come through, and there were guys who were arriving and graduating after the whole thing had happened, and the dark and before a decision had yeah. been made, and so yeah. it's like that dude had nothing to do with anything. In, in fact, like, there wasn't there, even hold on, it wasn't even here when it happened. Was gone before he even made a decision, and yet he didn't get to go to X Y Z because of your you know the you know that decision so i i do think the ncaa needed to find a way to try and correct that um but you know in this case i, I mean I, you find them or something but you don't you don't punish the student athletes that had nothing to do with it but you know they they say that they didn't get their you know an, their intentions uh relayed on time of, of what they were going to do as far as conference movement and that's what they're citing as far as why they're punishing well, them so punish the school yeah. or the administration or the department but not the players and one of the things about those who came whether it's baylor or elsewhere when there's dark, dark clouds hell if anything you should reward them for coming because they came uh despite that uh here's from tony on the ch uh, the text line ultimate petty rule old pacific coast conference used to have a rule that banned member teams from playing any team that left. Well, I mean, did we not talk about, well, are you going to play Oklahoma and Texas if yep. the opportunity comes up? I, I don't think the Big 12 is going to enact a ban on that, and I think if they did, I'd rail them for that. I mean, I don't think you, you leave your hands out and you leave your front door open for OU and Texas anytime they come calling, but I don't think you just pretend like you don't live there anymore either. I mean, you know, uh, I, that is petty. I, I hate that petty stuff, especially when it harms the, the people that don't have anything to even do with it. That's, that's what bothers me the most is if you're some basketball player on one of these teams and you're looking at, you know, the possibilities the rest of your career and, you, hey, well, I only got a handful of games left, but, man, we get into that conference tournament, maybe we can extend it, and now you don't even have that, so now you're just counting down and, like, you know the season's done. And that's the case for some teams. They know their basketball season's going to be done, you know, once conference tournament wraps. But if you had any slight hope – um, then, yeah, that just gets crushed well, by a reason, bunch of adults. The reason conference tournaments are so popular, the reason March Madness is so popular is not because Duke or Kentucky or Baylor or North Carolina or whoever wins. It's because of the crazy. Yeah, it is. Even and, if and, there's not a lot of it, there seems to be. And and I, I, I just know this, like banning somebody from playing or kind of like casting a black cloud over them if they play someone who's left, uh, that's all well and good in football when it's you would only play them once anyway or twice and it's hard to schedule but i just harken back to you know steve smith who was the baseball coach here after a m uh, left the conference and he scheduled them not that year but the year after and said and when people kind of said well what are you doing playing a m he's like look that's all well and good for everybody else but i've got to have midweek games i've got to have a couple of games that we can play home and away midweek or a weekend series that's close because baseball doesn't have the budget that football does they can't just jump on a plane and go somewhere, you know, 10 times a year. That's not how it is. You have to play all these games. You've got, you know, 40 games to play or whatever it is in baseball that they do. And uh, you got to have some midweek games. It's an hour and a half away. Sorry. I, he didn't have time uh, to be, you know, petty and jump on some sort of thing of like, oh, no, we're not going to play them anything ever again unless it, it just happens that way in a bowl game. You just can't do that. Mike Bean was saying Big 12 shunned Missouri and A&M for years. I'll tell you from the perspective that I have is that it was really a head coach of a specific team, and it could be all of them, that said, no, we're not going to play them. There were some at Baylor, we're not going to play them. But men's basketball, I don't think they stopped playing A&M. Texas has played A&M. Uh, it, Texas. Uh, it's, it, uh, now, in football, that's, okay, I see that. But in, in, I don't know about shunned, but that at the same time well, – Kansas and Missouri don't play in anything anymore, which is un unfortunate, yeah. especially yeah. in basketball. And how much interest was there on A&M to play Big 12 teams like as well? Yeah, like, they I were mean, like looking at the other side, I don't think that they were craving, like, well, we got to get that Baylor game in there. Mm -hmm. They sure as hell weren't trying to play Texas. Can't wait for that article again in November, the annual article that we'll get around Thanksgiving time about how they haven't played in forever and revisit that and talk about the same things that we've been talking about for however long, how many years it's been. But thankfully, that will now be uh, – 
Dunzo here in the next few years when they are absolutely going to play each other on a regular basis again, and that'll be great. But going back to the Horizon League, um, you know, or in any other leagues that are that are pulling this move of you didn't give us a year's worth of a heads up or whatever the the bylaws say. Uh, what about the spring sports that haven't started yet? Like they already know, like baseball. I don't know if baseball has started in the Horizon League. I mean, I just don't know. Um, but if it hasn't, or even if it has and it just got underway, you're already. You know, just you're done, guys. Sorry, like you're just playing to have fun. Basically, uh, you're not going to any postseason because you know the the people who are like five steps above you that you probably never even met before, they decided they want to move conferences and they didn't give us a year's heads up. So sorry, guys, uh, you don't get to play in the postseason. I, I think that that's shady and petty, and uh, yeah, I think we've made that point now. Right? Yeah, and I'm not sure about whether I know they said winter sports. Is that what you're on there? Okay. No. Now, one other note. And we'll have a transfer portal note as well today that they 